Hey, this is Taryn with The Remote Yogi, and I'm psyched to introduce you today to Connor McCreesh. Connor is a dear friend, but also a fitness genius, a social media guru, a lover of anything related to learning. He recently sold his fitness business for over six figures after just launching it a year and a half ago. He's obsessed with personal growth, creating a life that's shaped around his core values, and helping others to do the same. We're back with Connor McLeish. We had interviewed him last week on health and wellness and kind of uh, his fitness routine and why he got kind of involved in the wellness world. And today we're diving into more entrepreneurship and lifestyle stuff. Uh, he had his fitness business that he sold and he kind of um, has been making a lot of lifestyle changes to kind of embody his core values and uh, super cool things I'm excited to dive into. So we'll go ahead and jump in. Um, just kind of give us your background on school and what interested you in entrepreneurship and how that all started. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, okay, so I, I, I first got into entrepreneurship uh, as I mentioned uh, last week, I kind of, uh, I ended up getting introduced um, to, to Richard Branson as a person and I bought his autobiography and basically his life sounded, you know, awesome. He was doing all these crazy things, he just like made an airline and he blew some balloons around the world and he had an island and I was like, someone can have an island? This sounds insane. Um, <laughs> and, and yeah, so, so I, I kind of... I did that at about 15. At about 16, I, uh, you know, I was like, I'm going to be successful. I started telling people this, and I decided it couldn't be that difficult to make money on the internet. A little more difficult than I thought it would be. <laughs> um, it took me over a year to make a dollar, I think. But still, I had the, I had the drive to be like, I'm going to figure this out. I need to figure out how, how I can. How I, I want to be able to make money on the internet because then I can do it from wherever. That seems cool, um, and and so yeah, I, I started. Um, what was I doing? I think I was compiling different guides on various marketing things. So I was reading a lot about marketing and then compiling them into resources mm -hmm. and trying to sell those. I was. Oh, I think I think I, I ended up in some sort of pyramid scheme where I, I bought a, a program and they were teaching you how to make a website and do SEO in like a weird way and then you were basically selling their, I think this was their free course right. and then we were selling their paid course and I kind of got there, I, like when that was like revealed to me, I was like, wait a minute. Um, so I think I tried that. Um, so I, th I think the first money I made was from selling these resource guides and this right. was a year after I'd started and I was, I was reading all these different things and trying to figure it out. Um, and but then, did you like go to school for entrepreneurship? Like what? No, no, no. no. How, like, how no. did this whole thing no, happen? No, no, like, no. did you kind of always know you liked marketing, or? No, no. Um. So I no, I didn't. I, I, and and again, this was done when I was sixteen. So I I had no specialist training in in anything really. Yeah. In, fact, in fact, I'd done. I think I'd done a business studies course, or maybe was doing a business studies course, and was thoroughly like this is crap, I don't want to do this. Um, but then, yeah, I, I, I read this autobiography, I thought, okay, this lifestyle sounds cool. Um, and I think around the same time, um, Spaceship One had won the X Prize, and then Richard Branston bought that and turned it into Virgin Galactic, and I was like, I, 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 I wanted to be an astronaut, I decided I wanted to be an astronaut, and so now I had a third option for how to become an astronaut. Make enough money, and then I can pay to be an astronaut. <laughs> So this is still all very much aligned with I want to go to space. Um, still, still the case. Um, so yeah, I don't know. It, I just kind of I had a passion for it. I got on the internet and I was just like, how do you make money on the internet? Yeah. But I think the first thing I did was you could fill in surveys to get paid. Yeah. You never ever got paid. Like you right. always did a survey and then they were like, okay, oh, fill in another survey and then you got ten surveys deep and you were like, no, nobody makes money doing this. It's it's, it's a lie. Um, so then I got into learning how people were doing marketing and, and all of this kind of stuff. Um, I studied at university, I studied physics, um, again, well, partially because astronaut right. and scientists can become astronauts, but also because I just, via being kind of enchanted by 
and space and science and technology and all of this kind of stuff. I just decided, well, I don't want to work in physics, but I'd like to know it. Mm -hmm. Sounds like a cool thing to know. It was um, <laughs> a cool thing to know. Not a cool thing to do exams on and, and all of that kind of stuff, but really fun to know in, in an in-depth level. But um, yeah, the entre entrepreneurship was all kind of self self-led and um, yeah, just over overdoing it for so long. I mean, I didn't get any success in it, not not really, um, until a, a year or two ago. Yeah. Um, and so just by just by being in a space for long enough, you you'll kind of get to the assumptions that people have, and then you'll smash through them, and then you'll get new assumptions. So when you meet entrepreneurs, they're normally at various levels of how they think the world works, or or, or the the entrepreneurial world works, or like what they think that they want. Uh -huh. Um, and just by being in this for so long, I can kind of, I've kind of gone, I've gone through those just, just, just by doing it for so long. Um, so like explain that, like, what do you mean about like the mindset of entrepreneur and why people do it? And so, so there are lots of, I, I think that the, like the main thing is that people don't know what they want. They know what they think they want. Mm -hmm. They think they want to make a load of money mm -hmm. because lots of money is great new capitalism um <laughs> but but they, they, i mean they haven't really thought about that they haven't really thought you know what, what do i actually want to spend that money on why do i want to do that so so a lot of people so what one one persona of entrepreneurs is the ones that want to make the silicon valley unicorn startup you know they want to they want to they come up with an idea they think it will make a lot of money they get a load of investment they they go through these rounds of investment and they figure I, I'm going to sell this, and then I'm going to have a hundred million. Um, obviously, very few people do that. Yeah, uh, it takes a lot of work, and and a lot of the time, you you know, you're, you're selling away your soul for that time in hopes of of you know having this exit. And then a lot of people really haven't thought about why why do they actually want that? I mean, yeah, there are plenty of startups that like want to change the world with some innovative technology. But then for every one of those, there are 50 more that are just doing something that they think will make them a lot of money. Uh, right. They're doing just a, you know, a, a SaaS tool or you know a, another email automation software. No one is trying to change the world through that, or very few of the companies are. Uh, so so that, that's, that's one of the personas. Um, I, I, a lot of the time, it just comes down to not having thought about what you, what you want that bad. Um, so initially, I... And, and I'd been in that trap, so I was trying to make money online, I was trying to sell my own products, but I didn't really have any expertise, so I, I could only sell combined resources. Then I just needed money so badly that I started freelancing, so I'd be making these guides for other people, because I was good at making guides and like pulling together information. Uh -huh. So that was good, and, and like for my age, I, I like was making some good money, but then freelancing has the problem of, you know, you... you you get 10 potential clients when you can only take on two and you get none for weeks and weeks when you need them. Yeah. And then, uh, so yeah, I kind of played with that and kind of got my hands into marketing and sales copy and building websites and all, all of this kind of stuff, which was good to have confidence in being able to do. Yeah. Uh, I then, um, at university, fell into the startup trap. So I decided I wanted to make a startup and that was an entrepreneurial education platform, which I've kind of spun back around to because it's something that I'm passionate about, but I want to do it in a very different way. Mm -hmm. So I thought, okay, I think enabling people to be entrepreneurs is a great thing. So yeah. how do I enable the most people to be entrepreneurs as possible? So you need your tool to be free. Uh, you need to think of smart ways to distribute it. You want to have a course that fits anyone's business idea. Um, and obviously, it, and and then you need some way to make money. So if it's free, you generally need to monetize some data, which means you definitely need several rounds of investment. And when you're getting that investment, like like what what if you can't get that for ages? What if you hate your investors? Um, you know, if you're going to be in a relationship with someone for ten years until you can exit, you best make sure they're the perfect person. Um, I mean, you wouldn't, you know, you, you probably wouldn't marry someone after like three meetings. <laughs> um, that, that seems like a dumb idea. Uh, so I, I, I was going through that and we built up this product and I was in, I believe I was in India um, on an entrepreneur trip pitching this business to investors. Um, and then I recall very clearly, I'm sat by the pool at this, uh, on this like um, tower building in the middle of, um, I 
think it was Bangalore in India, and I was listening to one of Tim Ferriss's podcasts, um, and he was saying that he was stopping investing in businesses because it it like it seemed like it seemed like a good idea. You know, you invest in businesses, you get to help out early stage companies, and you obviously make a lot of money if you're good at it. He seems to be very good at it. He's made some big investments. Yeah. He was just like, I just don't like, I don't like doing this. Like, it takes up so much of my time. It's so stressful. Like, why am I doing this? And I was like, oh, shit. I spent two years working on this business and I don't want to do it. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, then I panicked about the, the conversation I was going to have to have with my business partner. But um, anyway, that was all, that was all cool. And then I kind of, yeah, I'd realized that I didn't want investment. And I wanted to bootstrap a company, which means you know you don't raise any money, and you 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 know basically have some savings, and hopefully you make money before those savings run out. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so yeah, I I, I I I liked that idea. I went to work for a company for almost a year. And they were doing that, and they made they made separate companies, and they wanted to bootstrap all of them, and funnel money between them, and that seemed cool. And and I really liked that idea that you know you, you bootstrap it because then it it. It, I think it changes your mindset. I think it's a good thing to do because when you don't have a lot of money, you have to be super efficient. So you have to construct your business in a really efficient way. You can't just go, oh, let's throw 20,000 bucks at Facebook ads uh, like most startups do. Um, and, it, and it helps you get good at marketing. It helps you get good at sales to make sure your conversions are good, all of these kind of things. So I think it's really good. And then when you start making some money, because you've been so refined in it you know where best to put that money yeah um, yeah so yeah that's how I got into entrepreneurship <laughs> <laughs> well and like talking about kind of knowing when you wanted out and, and different things like that you kind of experienced that this last year with your fitness business that you end up selling mm -hmm. I think mm -hmm. like halfway through the year you were like oh I don't actually want to do this anymore yeah um but you kind of got really good at making your business more efficient, so you mm -hmm. didn't have to work on it as much. Mm -hmm. um, so I'd love some tips on that, and then also why you wanted to get rid of it. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, okay, so, so I, I had a... So my, my whole... Um, the whole structure of, of things I want to do is I want to do a kind of... I want to do a kind of big, impactful, awesome business, um, something change the world style, you know, energy, you know, genetics, I don't know, something space, something like big. Yeah. Because I love solving problems. And so I just need to find the biggest problem I can get my hands on. But that needs a lot of money. So the plan with the startup was make a load of money and I invest into that business. This fitness business um, was one rung down from the business I thought I would do. So the fitness business was an opportunity. So in the company I'd worked for, uh, it was called it's called Hopper. It's an Instagram scheduling tool. So I, I toyed out with um, I figured out that you know Instagram seemed like a good thing to do, and I tested out lots of different um, lots of different uh, Instagram accounts to kind of see what niche looked like it might be a good opportunity because so I wasn't really too fussed so I'm, I'm, I was quite good at marketing I had a long background in it but I figured okay I can probably more easily direct uh, those skills towards a certain topic and I figured it would probably be something like travel or fitness or fashion or whatever's big on Instagram I figured I would I would figure out what has the biggest like the most demand uh -huh. uh, for solutions and, and and go into that so, so I'd already kind of um, got started off with tools that help you automate stuff so that you don't have to spend as much time um, and through bootstrapping you want to automate as much as possible so that you can figure out a task you can make it take less time or you can you know do it all in one and then it doesn't because there's kind of a um, there's like a distraction cost I'm sure you know I'm sure you notice know if, if you're if you're doing something and then someone distracts you for a minute you're not distracted for a minute, you're distracted for five, six, seven minutes. Yeah. So if you have to get distracted three, four, five times a day to post an Instagram post every single day, that's gonna, it's not gonna take you the 20, 25 minutes a day that you tell yourself it will take. Um, it's gonna take you way longer and it's gonna eat up a load of time. So if you can compress that all into one session, even if it takes you, you know, the equivalent of 25 minutes a day, that's gonna save you because you're not getting distracted all the time with this. Um, all right. So I kind of realized that, that automation tools were a, um, were a good idea. And uh, through this testing, fitness seemed like it was a good opportunity. 
And so I wanted to do this, and it seemed like a good way to one figure, you know, kind of do some problem solving, figure out good marketing methods, practice that, and it seemed like the best way to make some money, which I really needed because I had about three months worth of cash to live on. Um, so yeah, I, I started doing that, and and I kind of I I scaled that up. That had some good success, um, and as soon as it did, I was like, okay, I'm going to go on and do some traveling. So I signed up from right here. Yeah. Um, and then as soon as that started, Instagram changed its algorithm. And then so I started making less and less money, which made me panic. But then I started <laughs> to have some success with Pinterest and was like, okay, well, I'm going to need to focus in on this because I don't have enough time to keep trying out all these different marketing methods. Right. So I focused in on that. And, um, and through really, really getting an understanding for like what – what can I do that has the you know the biggest payoff? How can I make my hours worth the most? Mm-hmm. Really, th- I think really identifying that is important because I, I went completely in on Pinterest, and it wasn't until six months into our into our year or five months into our year where I was like, I'm I'm not going to be able to pay for the next month. I have to make this make some money really quickly. Yeah, uh, I had about two weeks or so to do it. So I just focused it on Pinterest. Um, which I would periodically do, but I really had to go in on it. I made try sharpened up my sales copy, uh, and, and I basically only worked on the stuff that was important and that could have two, three, four, five times my business results very quickly. And, and I think that's I think that's important to do, and I think that's why a lot of um, entrepreneurs kind of dry up their mental energy. Um, they will they, they make a business, and they know there are all these things they have to do for their business. Um, and, and, and so they're, they're overwhelmed. They have to make blog posts and, and run five different social media accounts and all of these different things. And it's like, it just isn't good. You should test out lots of different things and figure out what works. But when you're trying to start a business and it isn't making enough money to cover the business bills, give you somewhere to sleep, pay for your food, these kind of things, you're, you're being stupid if you're doing all these other things that aren't giving you results. Mm-hmm. Writing high quality blog content, for example, is absolutely amazing if you have a giant audience that you can like uh, spread it out to and, and like make it worth it. That it, you know, when you spend 20 hours writing this blog post, you know that it's going to be worth those 20 hours you put in. And, and this applies for you know running 20 Twitter accounts or like like whatever you're doing. If it isn't making you traffic and that traffic isn't turning into some sort of sales or coaching clients or or, or whatever. You shouldn't be doing it until your business is in a good enough place that you can, you can kind of relax. Um, and so yeah, I, I, I kind of just focused it on what was working, and about three or four months before selling the business, maybe a month. This wasn't long before I, I decided to sell the business. Maybe a month or so, I managed to get the whole business down to about four hours a month to run, and that was just answering some emails. Um, but that was through obsessively focusing on only what's working um what takes me the least amount of time because i was getting a a larger and larger distaste for running the business it just wasn't i wasn't passionate about it yeah um which which is another issue to to watch out for um when people are focusing on making you know 100 million from their from their startup sale you you should first try a business which is going to make you more than enough cash than you need um, and that probably isn't very much. So if you're making 5,000 bucks a month, you can probably live like a king pretty much anywhere in the world. So I would say experience that first. And if you find that what, if you find that you lose motivation for whatever you're working on, you might not care about money that much. And so you might want to think about investing the next 10 years of your life into a startup that you don't like that much just because you think it will make a lot of money. Yeah. Um, Anyway, yeah, I, I automated it down, realized I didn't like the business and, and it was making it was making more than enough money and because it was taking so little time, I was then hungry for you know making a business that I cared about um, yeah. and actually figuring out what that would uh, that would look like. Um, yeah, was there anything else to that? No, I think that's good. I think it kind of leads into my next question is more about like your core values and mm-hmm. how that's kind of something that you're you've been focusing in on more recently and how to mm-hmm. shape your life around mm-hmm. your values to kind of describe your thought process behind that. Okay. So this was um, this was this was something that I I'd, it kind of just um, sprouted out to me. So. I, I journal almost every day, um, 
and and that's a great way to kind of get get your thoughts down. And most days, you know, it isn't anything particularly interesting or uh, or in depth. I just write down here's what I did yesterday because it's nice to have a, a, a log of what I did um, the previous day. So I can actually keep track of that. Maybe if I want to write a blog post, I can go back and, and look over what I did, and then three things I'm happy about. What I'm going to do today, and if any of that is like unnecessary, um, if I actually give it a second thought. And I just I kept seeing certain words kind of pop up and I knew there were things that I it, you know I enjoyed doing and I kind of I kind of went on to the um, the like the, the wise experiment so I was like I like doing this why because why and I just, would just keep going back and back until I kind of came to uh, till I came to something that I, I, I would enjoy doing it just because it's fun I just find it enjoyable uh-huh. um and like problem solving, you know, that's something I really like doing. And I, there's no deeper reason as to why I like problem solving. There's, there's no. It's like pure satisfaction. Yeah, there's like, th- 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 there's no like, childhood trauma or insecurity that has made me like need to solve problems to feel like validated in the world. I just like solving. It just feels very good. Right. Um, and, and so like like one or two of these words were like popping out of my out of my journal as I was kind of thinking about these, and I was like, wait a second, like these seem like they might be core values. And every time I've done a kind of core value exercise, it seemed it seemed silly because it normally starts off with think about your core values and write them down. Um, and, and and I think I, I think by looking at situations and then peeling back the whys on them to get to a certain group of words, and you might find that some of those words are the same things. You can actually construct a picture of of what motivates you uh-huh. and, and what you find fulfilling just for the for the sake of it. Um, so yeah, I was kind of thinking, okay, what what do I what do I enjoy? Rock climbing, I really enjoy that. Why? Because it's like uh, you know, it's it gets your blood pumping and you're outdoors. And so when I think, why do I like those? Well, I like adventure. Why do I like adventure? It just feels good. Yeah. Essentially, and uh, I like competition. Not necessarily with other people, but like I like, I like competing with myself. I like saying that I can win at. I don't care if I don't win. That's fine. But like it's it's fun to win at things. It's like it gets the adrenaline going. And so I was like, oh, okay, well that's why I like rock climbing because it's adventure and it's like competitive. Um, and so I kind of peeled back all of these things and I found that problem solving, um, a kind of competition, growth, uh, adventure, and uh, learning everything. Were, were my kind of core values and I realized that the, these these do kind of all link together so like uh, I, I think like pro- problem solving is is the thing that is like the number one that's like the top of the pyramid and to solve problems you have to learn everything you have to grow so you get your skills better so that you can solve those problems um, if you can make that problem a kind of competition it's, it's more exciting and exhilarating and it's a better way to like bring people together to try and solve the problem and then adventure is just good because it gives you uh it gives you the kind of headspace um it uh, I, like I other think, perspectives yeah. like you're outdoors and, yeah. yeah i think i think we were listening to this in ego is the enemy but but um uh ryan holiday was saying that one of the one of the things about nature that is that is so profound is that it's so big so if you're stood next to a mountain your ego the little voice in your head that's like telling you how great and important you are like it shuts up because it can't tell you how important you are when you're stood next to this (laughs) enormous mountain yeah and so when you when you can find ways to shut up that uh that voice in your head and you can kind of let your you know you can let your subconscious which you know, it has a kind of voice, but it's super quiet and it's normally just blocked out by everything that your ego is going on about. It's just talking, talking, talking. When you can silence that, you can actually tap into like a lot more creativity and ideas and stuff. And if you have creative solutions that you can tap into, mm-hmm. that helps you solve problems better. Um, and so I kind of figured out all of these core values and was like, okay, well, what what looks like the best business for me? Well, if the business ticks all of these core values, ideally more than once each, that's about the best thing that I can I can think of to do. Okay, if all of these things are what I fundamentally find fulfilling and enjoyable, then a business that does all of those must be the best thing to do. Mm-hmm. Um, and I haven't made that business yet; it's not complete yet. But in theory, when it's all up and running, it should be super enjoyable to do all the time. Yeah. Um, and then, 
if if I have a business that fulfills all of those core values, to me that should be the best way to make a load of money which can be useful for other things because those are the things that I care about without having to focus on making a load of money. Like the mm-hmm. money doesn't have to be the important thing, but if I can do things that I am good at and I enjoy and I'm passionate about and I can therefore motivate other people to like get involved with, if I can combine all of these things, in theory it should be, you know, it should help me make the most money I can make um, and, and be enjoyable. And then if I want to do the third business, whatever that will, whatever that will be, I still have plenty of cash to do it, or at the very least, a lot of expertise and um, a lot of backup in my skills to, to be able to do that. Mm-hmm. So, kind of just have a few more questions to kind of wrap it up. You've talked about a lot of different things that you've kind of learned through your businesses and, and things that you've been working on. So, what's like the biggest singular lesson that you've learned as an entrepreneur? <laughs> I mean, every, everyone says this, but like, it just it takes a lot of work, um, and I mean, I uh, so there, there's part of me that could give, that could kind of tell lessons to you, but again, with these kind of personas of entrepreneurs I've seen, you're not going to listen to them. Um, there's a certain amount of it that like you have to smash open your own expectations um, and the, you know these personas aren't it doesn't mean that they're all wrong or they will all come around to my way of thinking at some point um, it, it, it just means that that uh, you, you don't like you, you have to get out and do this stuff yourself um, yeah. to, 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 to be able to like figure it out to some degree and so you can take some guidance and then some advice but like the, the actual biggest lesson is like it just takes a lot of work. Um, you have to do it, um, and you have to ha- actually want to do it. Um, there's no point stressing yourself out, saying you want to do something, and telling everything, everyone you want to do something, and just not doing it. Okay? Like if you actually, if you want this and you want this enough, you will do it. You will put in the research. You will figure stuff out. You'll read around it, and you'll do something. Okay? Mm-hmm. You don't need to read 20 different blog posts on how to make an, you know, an Instagram account. Make an Instagram account post up some pictures, see what happens, research a bit more, make it better, make a website, you know, all, all of these different things, you just need to do it. And it's going to take a long time. And to some degree, I think you can speed up how quick you'll come up to these kind of common roadblocks and be able to smash through them. Um, you know, if, obviously the harder you work and the longer you, the longer you work, but to some degree, you're just going to have to figure this stuff out yourself um, when you get to it. So yeah, it takes a lot of work. Um, you know, expect to spend 12 hours a day, 16 hours a day working like a madman. I don't think that's a good, healthy thing to do for the entirety of your business. I think the whole hashtag grind life is just a bit it's dumb. Is a bit <laughs> it, it, it's very dumb. It's so stressful. But that's because people are saying you need to grind and grind and grind to make millions. Uh, and then well, what do you use these millions for? Right. Nobody knows. I, I want to buy a mansion. Why don't you just rent out a mansion for a bit? I need to, you know, own a Lamborghini. Why don't you rent out a Lamborghini for, for a week? Uh, and see how you feel about it. So, I think like work hard. But if you really, if you want it bad enough, you'll work hard and you won't mind it. You're going to get out of bed in the morning. You know, you're going to sleep for four hours, even though you definitely want to sleep for eight hours. But your brain won't shut up with these new ideas, and you want to go, 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 go. When you find something like that, you'll like it. You'll work hard. And, um, and and I guess think about like what do you actually want? Um, do you know? Do you need how much money do you need really? Because again, for Three thousand bucks a month, you can get by at most places. You know, in most places in the world, for four thousand bucks a month, you can like be quite happy. And five thousand bucks a month, you can live like a king. Um, so yeah, like what, like what do you like? What do you actually want to be successful for? Um, think about that stuff. Cool. That kind of actually leads into my next question. If anyone's like questioning whether starting a business is the right move for them. Would that be like your biggest advice, like the hard work thing or anything else? Um, I mean, yeah, definitely. Like if, if, if you've if you've never worked, if you've never convinced yourself to work 12 to 16 hours a day for months at a time, then you might not be able to do this. Uh, yeah, if, if you want to control the 
hours you work and, and where you work from and exactly what you work on and all of these things, then you might need, you know, you're going to need to run your own business. Um, and just because you run your own business doesn't mean you can do all of those things. So a, a lot of it is think about what life do you want, okay? Really break it down into what life do I want and then get how do I get there? Um, maybe like me, you need to find an opportunistic business that can make you a good amount of money and can kind of let you live half the life you want or most of the life you want and then you can you can leverage uh, the skills you gain and the position you gain from there to kind of go on but really think about like what do I actually want do I need a business to achieve that because um, yeah the, 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 the biggest waste is convincing yourself that you want something and then just following that for two years on a startup that you actually didn't want to do or you know however long um, right. and just wasting your time um and, and it, again, it wasn't, as another example of this, I'd, uh, I saw the, I think it was Jim Carrey, Oprah uh, interview where he writes himself a check for a million dollars. Yeah, and yeah. It. I did that and I was like, that's cool. And, and it was, uh, actually, it's about a month away and I'm, I'm, I'm not going to hit that. Um, but I'd kind of said that to myself uh, for ages and it, and it wasn't until I'd kind of had these core value things popping up that I was like, I mean, I, I knew that I only wanted to make a million just because like, why not? Okay, because if I'd made a million, I'd probably be in a, in a good enough position that that uh, you know that, that that like I'd be in a better position if I made a million than I could be otherwise. And it wasn't until I kind of had these core values come out and all this other stuff that I actually thought I, I, I don't care about the money that much. So I don't need that much money. Uh, I care about the other things. I care about enjoying the business I do. I didn't enjoy the fitness business, and still like it, 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 if i wanted to make a million it, even not doing much different with it if i held on to that for an extra six months i could have sold it for a lot, a, a lot more i just didn't care i didn't right. enjoy it i wanted to get rid of it get some cash and then fund that into my into my new business so um, yeah just like for anyone if you want to do a business or not think about what you actually want and why do you think you want that and how do you think your life is going to look like yeah. when you have those things because you know society tells you lots of different things and the vast majority of people just accept what society tells them and you know and try to you know try, try to get to a point where they're living the life um, yeah and clearly very few people live the life well and Simon Sinek's work might be good for that too just kind of figure out mm -hmm. the whys behind mm -hmm. uh, why you want to start a business to begin with but yep. that's really yep. good exactly yeah, I agree Cool. Well, to kind of wrap up, you're working on a new business. Just kind of give us a high level what that's going to look like and what you're hoping to put out soon. Okay. Yeah. So, so what I'm doing is I, um, so I've again had a big success with Pinterest. I have, uh, I mean, I managed to get 10,000 views, no, 10 to 20,000 views, 10,000 qu uh, quite sustainably, but up, peaking up to 20,000 unique uh, hits a day to my website from Pinterest. That took six months, maybe to a year after like really going for it. Mm -hmm. Helped Taryn tear, out with some of that stuff. Yeah, he's helped my pictures explode. Um, uh, Instagram, I managed to get an Instagram account up to quarter of a million in 10 months. So I was good and then that the algorithm changed but now I'm giving Instagram a go again and, and I, I think I can do a good job there. So I'm gonna produce, I've produced training on Pinterest. I'm producing one on Instagram. I am going to produce one on how to create something you can sell to your audience because if you can sell your own product then you're taking all of the profits from it and if it's an online product then there's no cost involved to you. Um, we're going to look at how to write sales copy, we're going to look at how to build email lists and all that kind of stuff, so that's another training. Then the final one is kind of into high level automation, so uh, how, how do you uh, take your business and use virtual assistants and softwares and stuff to, to really crush down the amount of hours you're working so that you can either not work at all if that's you know if, if your passion or whatever doesn't uh, you know doesn't align with your you know doesn't cross over with your business or you can only do the parts of your business that you really enjoy maybe you really like uh, writing or coaching people or whatever and you don't like all of the other stuff um, so, so yeah I, I've kind of I've got these trainings and, and they're all planned out and I'm, I'm kind of putting those together but uh, yeah, the, the, the brand of the business is travel, um, Instagram at Connor.McCreesh. So I'm going to, uh, I'm, I'm building up an Instagram travel network and, uh, and yeah, this, this business is all just kind of designed to 
leverage my skills, tick my core values in several ways. And so, yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to, to being a bit more uh, featured and active in this business, uh, be part of the brand of the business. And um, yeah, it's going to be exciting. I should be able to keep, keep up the fun travel adventures, actually help people in the best way I can, help them get to the lives they want. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited about it. Cool. And where can they find you online outside of Instagram? Um, uh, ConorMcCreesh.com is the other place to look and uh, Conor McCreesh Lifestyle on Pinterest. And I'll make sure to include all those links in the blog. So if you're watching this on YouTube, run over that way and you'll get some extra resources from us and business tips from Connor. So thanks again for joining us this week. It was a lot of fun, a lot of insight. And if you guys have any questions for him, I'll make sure uh, to have him involved in the comments as well. So if you guys need anything else answered, we can help you out. Thanks, Connor. Thanks for having me.